I'm going to start by saying how much I loved your movie. Uh, you probably don't know me at all. We've never spoken before, but I, I don't lie on camera. Uh, if I don't like something, I won't actually say it. But uh, I loved your movie. Look, thank you. Yeah. Uh, what's it like, if I'm not mistaken, your, your film might have been in a bidding war uh, the night right after it premiered. What was this experience like for you? Well, I was a bit removed from it. You know, there are people negotiating, but I, they did tell me that it was happening, it was happening in the past. Uh, it's completely surreal. It's the way you think it will play out, you know, 20 years ago and when you're dreaming of being at the festival and you're reading the stories and you're playing on films that go to the festival. You just assume that it happens to everybody else, but not you. So the fact that it felt like it was happening to us uh, was, uh, was it's surreal. It's, it's absolutely surreal. Uh, you know, it, it, it means nothing. It's just who's going to handle it with care, who's going to get it into the right theater, who's going to have patience. It's a somewhat unconventional movie with a lot of Herzog references, so you can't just dump it in the theater and, and hope that it does well on the weekend. It has to be handled properly. And, and so that's, that's something that we, what I cared about. Uh, talk a little bit about, uh, you, uh, you should mention that you have been, you've worked for a lot of interesting people, and I'm sure seen a lot of cool stuff. What, what has this ride been like for you to get to this point, you know what I mean, to have a movie in some sense? You should also mention some of the people you've worked for, because it's crazy. It's kind of like a jag off. No, 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 because you win. No. Well, just two steps. <laughs> no, look, I've been incredibly fortunate to work with uh, my heroes, and it's always terrifying to meet your heroes because you might be disappointed, but on the contrary, they just became even larger than life. And um, look, I was obsessed with Scorsese, and I went to NYU because he went there, and I was peeing like crazy, and eventually I was able to get an internship at his office, and, and then he took me out to Vegas with him for casino, you know, and then that, you know, he's been. I've, been, I've stayed in touch with him over the years, so, and because of him, you know, film so a you know, they have him, you know, Nick Fledge, and Nick Fledge, you know, we're out it's one thing leads to another, and so, 27 odd years later, you have this overnight success, the overnight success, there's 27 so years, it really is hysterical, isn't it? Right. Because I still feel like, I still feel like a PA. But you have all these people that have believed in you, even when you lost faith in yourself, and they just keep... The weirdest thing is that they, even like someone like Nora Ephron, she immediately treated me like a college. It made no sense to me. Uh, they're just that much fun. These people are just classic people, passionate, passionate at the top of their, at, at, at their craft, and, and humble and generous. I just can't, I can't tell you how lucky I am to get emails from Thelma Schoenmaker reading about the film. And of course, I'm celebrating her. She's a screen saver, you know, she writes computer and film, and she's, of course, married to Michael Powell, so we have to, you know, keep Tom Reps and Paul and Press for Directors. It's all a big thanks to them um, for being in my life and having so much faith in me and turning me on to so many of the masters. Uh, most people, 100%, uh, almost everyone watching this interview will not know much about your movie. I hate asking the generic question, but is there like a log line you want to tell people? What, what do you want to teach people about what the film is about? First of all, I'm the worst at this stuff. But it, 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 the short version is, it's like, it's me and Earl the Dying Girl is a very funny movie about, some, about a serious subject. But, uh, but the, 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 the bad version of it is, is about this kid who's coasting through high school. Um, trying to be as invisible as possible, just get out and go to college. And his mom forces him to move a friend of a girl who has to be here. And that friend should change his life. Okay. Actually, fair enough. Wait, you know what I mean? Someone, someone, someone asked me this morning what the film about, and I said, it's literally the title. It's me and Earl and the dying girl. And it's Earl, yeah. So he has one friend who he calls a co-worker. He's afraid to call anyone a friend. And what they do is they, they make these parody short film homages to the classics of foreign cinema. And um, so they make these movies for themselves in a very private way. And by the end of the film, they'll learn to, or at least Greg will learn to make the film for some people. And which is the biggest, I, the, the biggest reason I made the film, I made the film for somebody else as well. I have to completely up. How long was your first cut first in the final release? Uh, first cut was, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't significant. It was around two hours, and this was an hour, it's the you know, minute. Um, Nothing major. I mean, with a couple of big themes, but but uh, essentially the same. One of the things that I really found exceptional about your movie is your choice of shots. There's some great composition where you're not doing these fast cuts. You let scenes play out with the camera in very interesting places. Um, is that just your style? How did you decide on what you thought that this was going to be? Well. 
Um, I think it's about the subject matter and the theme of the style. That's why it's being in it. You know, I'm not a big fan of a lot of coverage or sometimes the classic Hollywood coverage works. And, uh, and what Chung Yun Chung and I, uh, my cinematographer, we just, well, you know, we knew there was a lot of talking in the film and we know that kind of movie looks like. And so how do we make it fresh for ourselves? How do we experiment with it without hurting the humor or the drama? And the, the biggest concern that I had was if we start if we start um, designing or just covering scenes, dialogue scenes between Greg and Rachel, will it all of a sudden become a romance? A romance? And the movie isn't about that. The chemistry of, it, 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 in five years, it, it's been a wonderful love story. But right now, it's about a deep acceptance. It's about mutual respect. It's about a, a, you know, it's about a deep connection. And so we. So that was some thought that went into the talking scenes and when do we earn the two stars that people don't expect something that they're never going to get. And then, and, you know, some scenes allow for more visual flourish. And, you know, they're going to have to be with the direct sequence. This, that allows them to some surprise. Some, 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 some. All you need is their heads and their faces. And you know, the cast Betty Bunny is nothing more just than the human face. But sometimes that's all you need. And so the, 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 the story tells you. What, 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 how it wants to look, you know, and then your own people you have sensibilities and they'll always be on screen, but it's about respecting the, the tone of the film. Uh, your casting is just like you just cast a lot of gems, just great people. It's a gem. Uh, talk a little bit about meeting Olivia, does such a great job. Obviously, she shaved her head. Uh, was that when you were meeting with actresses, actors, uh, was she your first choice? Were you meeting with a lot of people and did you tell them you'd have to shave your head and was there apprehension? Uh, Olivia, Olivia, Olivia was very early on had something that was just so right for very regal in a very quiet way, very confident, and, uh, and very authentic and honest, and all these kids just have to be so genuine. The language is so fresh, and I love the way Jesse wrote these kids because it was fresh, and it was, it was new to me, but it felt completely honest and not cynical, and, you know, I could identify with them. But Olivia, you, you didn't really talk about the hair. There was obviously, there was talk about about doing a mask, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, wig thing. And we explored that early on. I mean, in pre production. And what it would never look great. We probably have to use some visual effects to fix it. And we didn't have that kind of money. She had long hair, so she had a different really kind of thing happening in the back. And it was also very uncomfortable for her. So she said, I'm just going to shave it. And we did. And, and, it, and it freed her up. And it also opened her up the most of the there's a thing that we all did that it just happens when you do that this is just amazing for you what was the every time you're making from what I understand when you're making a movie uh, there's always one challenge that you never think you're going to overcome and somehow it works out or it doesn't what was the one challenge on this that you really didn't think you were going to overcome or manage to it's a good question uh, because I don't know if I'm going to ask it the way because to me it was a very you know, I made this film to kind of deal with to kind of um, process my father's death. This is really what it was. I wanted to take Greg's journey from out the other end like he does. Not that he dies, he doesn't die, but I, I wanted to kind of go back to explore that through humor. You know, and, and, and so would I, how would I, what would be, would I get through the film? How would it affect the emotional certain scenes and filming scenes? And how would I process that? How would I? I was the process of making the film change me, and, and some scenes, some, some, some scenes uh, were quite difficult to get through, and you still have to be strong and objective. And so it was more of a personal, will I grow from this movie? Will I take on this movie to put things about myself or to put myself back together? Will I be that strong? You know, so it was a, so it was a big like, personal exercise, and that's the personal answer to that. The other version is tone. Oh, you keep the, the bitterness free and you balance it throughout. And sometimes the funniest moments come when there's quick despair, you know? And, and would I be able to, to capture, to maintain the tone that the script did so well with performances and compositions and whatnot and music and find that balance, uh, that 
that's the uh, the, 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 I think the, the hardest challenge of the movie itself, taking myself out of the equation. For you, you basically, uh, every Sundance, there's a new one or two movies that sort of win the lottery in terms of everyone's buzzing about it, it sells, it's the buzz movie, you're clearly one of the movies that everyone is going to be talking about, and we'll probably be talking about all year. Are you sort of prepared for that life change that we live in New York or LA? LA. But are you prepared for that LA change where you're going to get back and basically, literally, be meeting with everyone because the buzz is going to be, you got to meet with this guy? Um, you even realize it's happening. Well, the, the funny thing is, like I said, you know, we're overnight assistant station, and I've been playing 25 years and working for the director of the unit. So I, I've been working so hard, like a lot of us, uh, that it isn't like I just showed up from Texas to the suitcase to this happen. So I got that. I would ask you to be a little higher up meeting style than what maybe you've had in the past. Well, it is. Uh, Look, it's, 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 it's unreal, and it's happening so fast, and it just happened yesterday. So I'm glad I'm getting you today. So I haven't really processed a lot. I know I haven't slept much in a few days, and, and I've been getting just incredible emails from just so much love and people that really respond to the movie. So I'm just so happy that people, that it looks like people can actually see the film. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And that feels great. Um, um, how this is going to change where I'm in LA and how I'm you know, perceived. I have no control over it. I'm not even there. It's so maybe I'm there. But uh, I'm just very grateful that, that I'm being hopeful because it looks like people are going to see the film and see the work with the great cast and crew. I'm a huge, huge Nick Offerman fan. I mean, I fucking love the guy, like, so much. Uh, what was it like getting to work with him, and was he always your first choice? All, I have to say that the adults were, all the, all the parents, and basically everybody was uh, our first choice. And Nick is, uh, you know, well, we were lucky because Dan Fogelman, who was one of the producers on the film, knew Nick, and they were getting to the and responded to him in way. And he already knew Kamani, who I knew from the horse, and it just kind of worked out. So, but Nick is just, uh, Brilliant, uh, humble. Every day he's going up on set, he's taking everybody's hand. The first day on set, he introduced himself to everybody, remembered everybody's name. We didn't have trailers, we didn't have anything we had to do with others. We were just hung out with each other. Just, it's just a part of the family. We can eat it, we can eat everybody. We can eat everyone at ease. For a film like this, for him to do that, to, to, to be um, so humble and so generous. And throw himself into a very unique role, a very quirky role to find a humanity in it. Um, look, there's nothing, I have nothing bad to say about anyone. Anyway. So we're very lucky on this film. Everyone really wants to be part of it. I have to know my last question for you. You were here yesterday. How many friends and family screenings did you have done or test screenings? And did you want to feel the energy that, like, wait a minute, could, you can have a great script and it can be a mediocre movie. But when did you realize, wait, people are really responding to this? In LA, we edited most of the film in New York. Uh, so we started, we did a few weeks in LA and we still see friends and family that we trust and I've known for a very long time and they switched to the and strong and impact people of all ages. Um, and then I, when we moved to New York, we had one biggest thing. And it seemed to be going that way. There were clearly things that we had to adjust. But then, you know, it was when you have some of like my mentors watching this movie and they actually like see them respond to the film emotionally the same way that a 15 year old son of a friend of mine. And we knew that something was kind of working. But once we got into Sundance, it was a mad rush to finish the film, so I hadn't really seen it in a big audience with a lot of people. And the biggest crowd we had was 80 people. This was like 1,500 people. I'd never seen it in a proper test in the next few years. So this was their first one. And, and it, yeah, it started to last as part that we never thought we had fun in it. And it just started to go with it. And by the end, it just felt like we were all, it was just a different communal experience that I never felt before. So there's definitely a plus. Everything had just been very small. And so I say, sir, I love your movie. Congratulations on everything. You really deserve it on this one.